Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. I did a video the other day on a CZ452 and 22 rimfire, and I sort of talked about and gave the options of, shall I do a video comparing the three different CZ rimfire actions? Now, over the decades that these have been around, we sort of transferred into the 452 from the Bruno. Then the 455 came along, which shows some similarities, and then the 457 came along. I will put a load of links on this video so you can see reviews of each and some of the differences of each in a bit more detail because this isn't specifically an accuracy comparison or a muzzle velocity comparison or a stock comparison. This is purely a video that shows you some of the differences between the actions themselves. 452, 455, 457. Right. I've just stripped these out the stocks because YouTube probably won't like that. So I can show you them in their format without doing any dismantling or putting back together. Now, they all use a similar magazine system. This older 452 actually has a steel magazine. The new 457 has a polymer magazine, but they are interchangeable and they're both interchangeable if you want with the 10 round magazines as well. The 455 in the middle happens to be a 17 HMR, We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute because these have got interchangeable barrels. The only real difference is it's a slightly longer magazine to fit the larger 17 HMR round because that is a 2.2 LR, that is a 17 HMR. So you've got a magazine for that and you've got a magazine for that. And you can sort of see the relative differences on there, hopefully. Just pop those out of the way for now. Try and keep everything in sequence because I'll no doubt be um, making a mistake somewhere on the line of this. Right, kind of ignore barrels because all the rifles have been available in different barrel profiles. You could have had a 452 with a standard sporter American barrel like this. You could have had it with a varmint barrel like that. That varmint barrel happens to be in a 455. Or looking at this 457, it happens to have the match barrel. Again, barrel lengths are different. The match barrel has a slightly tighter headspace chamber, slightly different throat to that as well. Just gives you a little bit different chambering tolerance on it. Sometimes you can feel it with slightly longer ammunition types, but it's not a problem. It just gives you that slightly more precision feel and the accuracy with the gun. That barrel's also fluted. This environment, that's a sporter. That's a 16, it was a 20 and was shortened. That's a 20 and that's a 20 as well. None of that really matters. It's nothing to do with this review. But let's look to start with at the 452. So that is a steel action. It's a rear locking bolt and all the bolts have got a similar face to them in the fact you've got a sort of control feed face. You've got two extractor claws which draw it out and you've got a manual ejector. And that manual ejector is a pin inside the action. That as that bolt draws backwards, it kind of flicks off the round off the front of the bolt there. So if I just take this one out, this is a 455 you'll see that this is, it's a bit awkward doing this upside down and backwards, but we shall uh, do our best. You can see that's the same there, but it's nice to decock that. That's the same as the 452. Um, these bolts look very similar, but I've got it written on them actually. If I swap them around, that's a 17 on it. So I remember which rifle they go in because they do look very similar, although they are just slightly different dimensionally torrents on them. And then the 457, we moved on a little bit there. We get a proper bolt release catch on the left side and the bolt comes out like that. But compare the 457 with the 452, the actual bolt face, not a huge amount of difference, but the rear end of the bolt is very different. We'll come to that momentarily. Right. So steel action, magazine wells bolted on the bottom. We've got an 11 millimeter dovetail for the scope to go on. Pretty simple, same as any rim fire. And you can, if you want, add a Picatinny rail to that. And this is where some of the crossover starts because the 455 is similar and you can add a Picatinny rail to that. This happens to be a Country Sports wholesale rail, um, which is added on, slides on the dovetails, and then it's got six little grub screws that tighten down to lock it in position. I put that on probably just for the simplicity of using different scope mounts. Um, it wasn't particularly, I don't think that's an inclined rail. No, it's not an inclined rail. I just wanted it because I wanted to have a bit of swappability between different rifles back and forth. So I went for Picatinny on there. The 457, similar. That also comes the dovetail action. This LRP happens also to come with 
the 25 MOA rail, uh, you know, as part of the package as well. That does give you a bit more long range potential, especially it's LRP, long range precision rifle, blah, blah, blah. But again, interchangeability in those respects. Now is where we start to see major differences. If you look at the trigger system on the 452 and the trigger system on the 455, that's possibly a little bit neater, but fundamentally it works in the same way. If you want to start adjusting these triggers, it's a case of a bit of dismantling, a bit of gunsmithing, putting some shims and things on the insides of these to make sure these sears are not over-engaging and you get a crisper release. To be honest, I did that one 15 years or so back. I've never done this 455, which is probably five years old, but I don't really tweak and twiddle too much with guns now. I just get used to them and use them as they are. I use so many different guns every day. My technique is sort of versatile and it isn't reliable on a specific gun working in a specific way. I have to sort of adapt to work with whatever. So again, similarly, you can see the magazine fits on in the same way. It's bolted on in two places at the base of the action. Same on the 457, but a little bit different in concept there. The next thing is similar triggers, but we've got a different action. Now the 455, or the 452, you can see that that barrel is screwed into there. That's in there for good. You could probably have it removed by a gunsmith if you ever wore one out and wanted it replaced, but it's not really something that's gonna be financially likely or frankly, physically likely because you just don't really wear out two two room fire barrels, maybe a 17 HMR, but at the end of the day, the rifles aren't massively expensive. It's probably cheaper just to buy a new rifle. We're pretty much going to end up now talking about the fact that these are both round bottom actions, as is the 457. But we can see here where we've got a, you know, a rear add on there, which is what the screw goes into to hold it into the gun. And on here, we've got the actual screw holes in the action themselves, and the same on the 455. So we can see some commonality here to here and some commonality here to here. Right, I'm just going to put that out of the way now because I'm kind of done with that. Now, when CZ brought out the 455, they brought out the fact that you've got interchangeable barrels. I will add a link to doing to the description and the full video on this concept because I've done it several times before. But essentially, you can release those two grub screws at the front of the receiver there and the barrel will come out. There's a space that comes with it. You can get different magazines, different magazine wells, and essentially they're all interchangeable. So the action is in fact fundamentally one length and you can change that to suit the cartridge you want to shoot with the appropriate barrel. There is no particular thing stopping you changing any of them other than the fact that the stock you might have could be for a, a slim barrel and you want to put a larger barrel in it. But again, that comes back to stocks. So essentially that is pretty much where the 452 and the 455 start to differ. Then we move on. We have the 455 here, interchangeable barrels, kind of old fashioned bolt, kind of old fashioned trigger. Magazines are the same, again, similar to 452. And now we look at the 457. Big, big, big step on now in terms of the actual manufacture. These barrels on a 455 and a 457 are totally interchangeable. I have actually shot this 457 with that 455 barrel on it. They both fit in exactly the same way. You've got two grub screws at the front of the receiver there. Remove those, the barrel comes out, fits back in. You'll see the video on it, I'll link that in. And you've got, you can see here, there's a spacer block in the magazine well. Now that spacer block in the magazine well is because it's in use as a 2-2. Sorry, that's the wrong way around. Were I to be using this as a 17 HMR, when I did the barrel swap and put a 17 HMR barrel and I would take that spacer out of the magazine well and then the, four, you know, the larger 17 HMR or 22 WMR magazine would fit in. So again, modularity, interchangeability, good stuff. So, right, yeah, so we changed basically the, the whole receiver now at the front end, 455 and 457 is interchangeable, intercompatible, totally different from the 452. The other place where the 457 then did further evolve is because you kind of get rid of the old fashioned gunsmith adjustable trigger, blah de blah de blah, you know, moving levers, this, that, and the other. You've got to shim it, you've got to do all sorts of stuff to it to, to tune it. You've now got a modern trigger. You've got all the modern manufacturing capabilities and methods. You've got grub screws, lock nuts, everything. You can change sear engagement, trigger weight, all that kind of stuff. And you don't need any 
special tools, just Allen keys, small spanners, and you don't sort of have to have the gunsmith's art to do it. You can do this yourself, and I have done it on some videos. Where can I tell you next about this? Right, we've already talked about the bolt release catch because on the 452 and 455, you pull the trigger back to draw the bolt out. The 457, you've got a separate bolt release catch on the side there. Safety catch. Now that was kind of the other big difference going from the 452, 455 onwards to the 457. Let me just put this back in here. So, put that one in there. Put this one in here. So, 455, 457, 452, same as 455. The bolt, sort of a, is it a 90 degree lift? It's nearly 90, 90 degree lift, so it's quite 85 degree lift on that. It's rear locking, works smoothly, no problem at all, small bolt knob on it, but the safety catch clicks forward to lock the bolt and it locks the firing pin. It physically blocks that firing pin from going anywhere. So it's not like a trigger lock, it's a firing pin lock, which is very safe, very secure, very durable, will last you forever, and it's extremely, well, I think I've said all the words I can say about it. They just work. But the funny thing is, it's kind of the wrong way around because it's forward for safe, and then rear, this is a safe dry fire, for fire. And, you know, similar to that. So, there we go. On the 457, things moved on because we then went on to a sort of more conventional side safety catch there, which flicks forward for fire, rear for safe. But on safe, it doesn't lock the bolt. There are some benefits to this, some downsides to this. Yes, it kind of works in the conventional forwards is fire, rear is safe, but it locks the trigger, but it doesn't lock the bolt down. Now, that's not a huge issue, but some people do like a bolt lock. On this specific 457, which is the LRP, a kind of more target rifle, chances are you don't really need a bolt lock. You're not going to be walking around, knocking it on branches, catching things, dropping ammo out. It's a competition rifle, but the fundamental concept is the same. And although that looks like a, a huge, great big bolt knob on there, it's actually just a rubber cover which fits over I don't know if I can actually get that off, but essentially there's not a huge amount of difference between what's under there and that. The difference being that there is a slight curve to the shape and it's a little bit more modern and when you actually look at it, it's no longer a sort of 85 degree lift, it's more like a 45 degree lift, which when you're cycling the action quickly gives you really good fast durable performance. So really that is about it. There's no interchangeability on the bolts between them. The trigger interchangeability is, again, you can get some similar trigger tune kits for the 452 and the 455, but the actual action length is a little bit more specific on the 455 and they're not interchangeable. If you've got a 457, all the bolts are interchangeable, all the barrels are interchangeable, all the, everything's interchangeable on them. So CZ really moved on there. What I like most about the 457 is that they, the 452 and the 455, were superb guns. They always worked, they never failed, they lasted forever. Who, who didn't start out shooting probably with an old CZ or a Bruno and, and, and you know, it just worked. The triggers could be a little bit heavy, but they always worked. The 455 was a big quantum leap forward in terms of the investment in manufacturing capability, computerized machinery, all that kind of thing. Whereas these were developed back when, you know, machinery was made around, was made around dies and forms and copies and this, that and the other. This is all computerised, everything's computerised. You don't see any injection moulded polymer on there apart from that trigger, that magazine well. Whereas on here, we've got injection moulded polymer there and we've also got all this computerised machining, multi-axis in terms of the shapes, this, that and the other. That was just a pure steel cylinder and here we've got, you know, multifaceted looks to about it. We've got flat down the left side, flat on the right side. It's far more sort of stylish. Yeah, it's still got that same integral rail in it. It's got a Picatinny mounted on top of that rail. And yes, the bolt is slicker, it's smoother. It's a different design of bolt entirely. Let's just take that out and just compare the two side by side. And if you look at these two bolts here, you know, they are pretty much a quantum leap apart, but you've still got the twin extractor claws still works the same way. One of the smart things about this though, and a lot of people criticize people dry firing rim fires, I do it because I've never found it to be a problem. 
Some rim fires are not as strong as others, but CZ has never given me a problem. But one thing I would say about the 457, which I've always found quite a superb upgrade, if I can just decock this bolt. If you can see here, when I decock that, can you see how that firing pin has got a completely flat top on it? And that firing pin effectively hits the back of the barrel, the solid edge of the, you know, the solid lump on the butt of the barrel. It doesn't go near the chamber wall, the chamber edge, anything like that. There's only that little chisel tip firing pin that's there. So effectively, you've got a hard stop on that firing pin on a non-wear and tear surface. So although I've never had a problem with the 452 or 455 or 453, which is kind of somewhere weird in the middle, the 457 kind of it locked a stable door before the horse had ever bolted and it's just a fundamentally good idea a simple design and, and it just works extremely well again we've kept that little you know slim steel bolt shaft there's no overdue you know it's not too big it works quickly smoothly you, live, you know I'll, I'll link videos of me shooting these rifles but this shoots incredibly fast and although i can shoot the 452s fast i can probably shoot this one just a little bit quicker because with that sort of larger rubberized ball knob on there you just get a, just a little bit more tactile interaction you can add these to any of the 457s well all the 455s and the 452s but you do need to be aware that it might sometimes bump your scope things like that depending on what you've got on your scope because of course this being only a 45 degree bolt lift just means that that bolt handle doesn't come up as near to your scope so if i if i hold both of these up like that there can you see the difference in the bolt position on them it's it's a bit subtle to see but you'll see it maybe in videos when we're shooting them and the fact you just get more clearance on your scope and if you've got you know for example like this a throw lever on the side of a scope that comes up you know roughly where the bolt is that can sometimes interfere whereas on the 457 with the sort of shorter bolt handle travel you don't have that issue right I think I've pretty much covered everything. There is not a lot more I can say about this because the design, the idea of this was it was going to be a fairly lighthearted, fairly easy thing. And I just wanted to show you the differences on screen fundamentally between these three rifles or these three rifle actions. Again, this isn't about barrels or calibers or stocks because stocks are whatever you want to fit you for your scenario. The caliber again is whether you want to shoot rimfire or whether you want to shoot, so 2 2 rimfire or 17 HMR. Again, personal choice but this is all about the evolution from the 452 to the 455 to the 457 and why well you can see those big steps 452 455 really the only change is the fact the barrels became interchangeable 455 to 457 barrels are interchangeable and identical between the two of them but you got a totally new action a totally new bolt a totally new trigger and total modularity to swap between long and short action rim fire cartridges right i'm sure you'll have lots of questions to add about this which is the most accurate which is this which is that which is the other there is actually a video of me shooting that 452 out to about 300 meters there's probably been videos of me shooting the 457 out 300 meters at the end of the day I don't take it too seriously and when you get the wind involved at longer range you can't see all that group's better than that group or that gun's better than that gun it just happened that the day was better or the ammunition was better or it wasn't as windy or as miserable or the backstops were good or the or the, the the targets were better i've shot you know i've shot them all just for the fun of it that one is easier to shoot at long distance in the lrp stock the 452 in its sporter stock is far easier to shoot for hunting purposes each would do the other's job but each makes that job a little bit easier from that perspective. So there we go. Right, I hope you've enjoyed that review. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I want to see a lot of comments on this asking all these questions. And don't forget, click the notification bell and keep track of my regular uploads because I particularly enjoyed doing this video because I love shooting rim fires. I love talking about rim fires. They're easy life because ammunition is not expensive, they don't make a huge amount of noise. I mean, you can see I've got sound moderators on all of these. The 2.2s two are very quiet, the 17 HMR with the big mod on is still not exactly antisocial, and I really just enjoy shooting them. So, here you can see a few of the bits and pieces 2.2 two and a 17 HMR. There's a 2.2 five rounder versus a 2.2 10 round magazine. There's a steel five round magazine, and again, everything is interchangeable. Which would I buy? Well, as I did, the little second hand video the other day, you can pick up these 452s for virtually nothing. The 457s, yes, more expensive, but yes, more advanced, more modular, more futuristic, 
more up to date maybe, not futuristic, up to date. So there we go. Right, I don't even think I'm going to edit this video. You're going to get blurbs and, and, and everything in it. So thank you for watching. Bye for now.